Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil mursalin. Seyyidina ve nebiyyina ve şefi'ina ve habibina ve mevlana Muhammedin sallallahu ta'ala aleyhi ve sellem. Ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ecma'in. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. A special greeting to Dean TV, our viewers from Dean TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To our non-Muslim viewers, a very good afternoon. Namaste Bolwani. Every Muslim who understands the wisdom of his or her existence gives his gratitude to Allah and is indebted to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should be dearer to us than everything in the world, more than our wealth, more than our children, more than our parents. This is Iman. Our Love for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a condition of faith, a condition of iman. And Anas radiallahu an said that our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. None of you will have faith Till he loves me more than his children and all of mankind. Allah says in Surah Tawbah, "Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." "Qul in kana abaukum wa abnaukum wa ikhwanukum wa azwajukum wa ashiratukum." Tell them, inform them, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If it be that your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, or your family, وَأَمْوَالٌ قَدْ تَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا The wealth that you have gained, the business in which you fear a decline, or the houses in which you take great delight, أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَانٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ Are dearer to you than Allah or His Messenger or the striving in His cause? Look at the warning. فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَعْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ Then wait until Allah brings about His decision. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah does not guide those that are rebellious. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbi. Look how the companions, the Sahaba Ikiram, may Allah bless them, used to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu an, he said, I love the Messenger of Allah. I love Abu Bakr and Umar and I hope that Allah will resurrect me with them even though I did not perform actions similar to this. May Allah include us with them. Amen. The Messenger of Allah was asked about the person who loves the person but his status, his maqam is not close to this. And the Prophet said, Al-mar'u ma'a man ahab The one One is with those whom he loves Subhanallah Sayyidina Anas was so happy When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that He said the Muslims at that time Were never happier when the Prophet alayhi wa sallam said that Because why? Dhalika fadlum min Allah such is the bounty of Allah, because that is from the ni'mat of Allah. That is completely His ni'mat. Our entrance into Jannah is not necessarily only because of our deeds, 
or because of our deeds? No, because of His mercy, His rahmah, ya Allah. Sayyidatina Aisha radiallahu anha said, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to him, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are more beloved to me than myself and my family and my children. Sometimes when I am at home, I remember you sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I cannot wait until I come and just to sit and look at you. Ya subhanallah. And when I contemplate about my death and your death, I know that you will be with the prophets. And you will enter into paradise. But I fear that I might not be able to see you in the akhirah. The Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not answer. He waited for the ayah to come. And the ayah descended. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ And whoever obeys Allah and His Rasul, His Messenger, then they will be in the company of those on whom Allah has bestowed his grace. And who are they? Of the prophets, the true believers, the siddiqeen, the shuhada, the martyrs, and the righteous people. May Allah make it for them. Amen. And Allah says further, وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And how excellent are these companions. Isn't that so? Imagine Allah affords us to be in that company. Ya Allah, Amin Ya Rabbi. That love that was shown by the Prophet وسلم, to the Prophet وسلم, rather, was even shown by inanimate objects. In the past, I have given you numerous examples. I give you one. And it was reported by Sayyidina Anas ibn Mali. He said the Prophet وسلم, used to deliver his khutbah from a tree stump where he used to rest himself against. So they decided now the Prophet is getting on on his years and so forth. Let us build him a nice mimba or pulpit, you know. And the Prophet ﷺ went on to the new one. That old pulpit, the trunk, the tree trunk started crying, started weeping. And the hadith says, فَنَزَلَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَمَسَّهُ فَسَكَنَ He says, the Prophet ﷺ descended from his new member and went around it and hugged it. And that made the tree contented. Stop weeping. That's why. Are we then made of stone? That we cannot have some form of love for the Prophet ﷺ instead of debating about it. Do it, my brothers. Don't walk the walk as they say. Do the talk. Isn't that so? Subhanallah. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Say to them, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam If you love Allah, follow me. And Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Allah is forgiving and Allah is merciful. In order to express our love to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and please Allah, there is a formula in the Qur'an and we all know it. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم verily and undoubtedly undoubtedly Allah and his angels sends blessings on the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم oh you who believe send upon him blessings and salute him fully well in abundance اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد 
We are therefore urged to recite the salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at least once in our lifetime. For it is far, it is wajib, and it is wajib to respond to his name when you hear it. For skipping it causes humiliation. MashaAllah, this masjid I all am very happy that you and I together, whenever the name Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioned, the response is resounding, my dear brothers, compared to some of the other mosques, especially if you go up north. SubhanAllah. Why do you want to keep silent? What for? Want to debate again? Must we say softly? Must we say loudly? Must we wait on this? Yeah. Look what Abu Huraira says, radiallahu anhu. He says that the Prophet والسلام, said, May his nose be rubbed in dust. In other words, may he be humiliated and disgraced. In whose presence mention is made of me. And he doesn't make dua for me. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Subhanallah, ya Allah. You will be recognized as the one who is a bakhil, a miser. As reported by Sayyidina Ali, karam Allah wajh. Where you heard the Prophet said, The miser is the one in whose presence I am mentioned, but he does not make dua for me. Does not supplicate for me. Does not send his salams and darood upon me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. You will be among those that Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam made dua against. And the Prophet said, Ameen. The famous hadith, may Allah protect us from that, Ya Rabbi. It was narrated again by Abu Huraira. It said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Come near to me, come near to the mimbar. And Ka'ab bin Ujra later and they came forward to the mimbar. And when he climbed the first step, alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, Ameen. When he climbed the second step, he said, Ameen. When he climbed the third step, he said, Ameen. Ya Allah. And when he came down from the mimbar after his talk, the Sahabi asked him, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have heard from you today something which we have never heard before. He said, alayhi salatu wa salam, when I climbed the first step, Jibreel appeared before me and said, destruction to him who found the blessed month of Ramadan and let it pass by without gaining forgiveness. And upon that said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I said, Ameen. When I climbed the second step, Jibreel said, alayhi salam, destruction and shame upon him before whom your name is taken, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he does not make dua for Allah's blessings on me. And I said, Ameen. And when I climbed the third, third step, <laughs> Jibreel alayhi salam said, Destruction to him, in whose lifetime his parents, either one or both of them, reaches old age, and through failure to make khidmat serve them, he is not allowed into Jannah. And I said, Ya Subhanallah, may Allah protect us, may always make us that we decide how in abundance the, the, the root of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Almighty in the Holy Quran has asked us to do many virtuous things. Salah, fasting, hajj, zakah, you name it. It's been asked of us to do. He asked even the malaikat. When Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam was created, make sujood. Is that so? Yes, make sujood. But in any of these commands, he never said, I'm also part and parcel of the process of doing that type of ibadah with you. Never said that. But that honor is exclusively for our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said in the surah, as I mentioned earlier, that Allah and His Malaika make salawat on the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, you who believe, bring salawat. Make salawat on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa sallallahu wa sallam. So there cannot be a greater honor, my dear brothers and sisters, to have been favored with this ni'mah, with this divine blessing by action by which Allah and His Malaikat are part and parcel of the process of sending His Durud Sharif, His Salawat 
with us together on Him. I've said this piece a couple of times already, even yesterday for the Dohar Qarab, where Imam Nawawi, Rahimallah, great personality, many hundreds of years ago, he was asked the question, هل الصلاة على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أعظم صلاة أم صلاة الفرق الذي كرر الله تعالى Is the salawat on Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم greater in reward or is the reward greater for those when you are making salah five times a day فسكت الإمام النووي دقائق says that for a few moments Imam Nawawi kept quiet and then he answered by saying that the salawat on Nabi Muhammad وسلم, is greater than the five salas that we are doing. Ya subhanallah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kayfa taqool? The question is, how can it be? Allah has made the five salas for all. Imam Nawawi kept quiet and listened to his ranking and so forth, if I can call it like that. And then he says, فقال الإمام النووي نعم فرض عليك خمس صلوات في اليوم Yes, the five salats every day is found. وفرض عليك صلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم is also found, he says, because of the ayat of the Quran. Right? إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحابه وبارك وسلم. So that's also fun. So how you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna choose? So he says the question is says فهما إذا يتساويا. He says it is equal. It is equal. So Imam Nawawi says, La, cannot be equal. He says, Allah is ordering you, ordering the malaikat, and making it is followed upon himself to bring the darud and salawat of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So definitely that togetherness must definitely be more sawab on reciting the darud on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, subhanahu wa Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. There are various places, recommended places, to, and times to make salawat. Friday, Jum'ah, is an important day to bring salawat on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even that's from the Thursday night. Because Thursday night is Yawm al-Jum'ah, or Laylatul Jum'ah rather. Sunnah to bring the salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we enter the mosque, when we exit the mosque, Recite salawat on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have found for centuries when the khatib stands with his tonga, like we find here in the Cape, he recites the salawat on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Slowly it's, a, it's dying away. Although for centuries it has been part and parcel of the masajid of the world in hearing that to such a degree that the adhan al Muhammadiyah. Then at the end of the Adhan, they used to recite, As-salatu wa salamu alayk, Ya man al-sallallahu ta'ala rahmatan lil alameen. Go to Egypt. You see the massage through there. It has been happening. But slowly it's become now a bid'ah, unfortunately. You know, now we're taking everything away. We're cleaning up Islam. This is what is happening nowadays. Very sad. When you visit the grave of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatu wa salamu alayka ya habib Allah, ya rasul Allah. Isn't that no wishes that we are? What a moment that we are sitting there. Many times the words can't even come out to express your beauty. Ya Allah, ya Allah. Allah, Allah. When you go Safa and Marwa, you recite salawat on Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. During the sermon, the khutbah, we're hearing it. After the adhan, we are reciting the dua. When you make the adhan, the iqamah, we're hearing it. Ya Allah. When making dua, your dua is not accepted until and unless you bring the salawat on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anh says, 
The dua is suspended between heaven and earth and none of it is taken up until you send blessings upon your Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya subhanallah. In the kunut, even in wudu, some of us have learned, Allahumma ja'ani bin al-tawabin, very quickly. We have been taught, we must first say the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad abduhu wa rasuluhu. Allahumma ja'ani bin al-tawabin, wa ja'ani bin al-tawabin, wa ja'ani bin al-tawabin, wa ja'ani bin al-tawabin. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, wa ahdaka la sharika lak, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad abduhu wa rasuluhu. And we send him a salam in every aspect, excuse me, of our life. We say that when the person wants to get married, you start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and bring Darun on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then you say Qamil tu nikah hali nafsi bidha for example. These are all part and parcel of doing it, my dear brothers, and sending salawat on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the reward and benefit of sending blessings? It's been said by Anas bin Malik that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he who sends blessings on me, Allah sends blessings on him ten times and removes from him ten sins and raises his maqam, his degree, another ten. Ya subhanallah, Allah Muhammad wa Muhammad. Can you imagine? Do we understand when it's been said that Allah raises our degree by ten? What are we talking about? Well, I'm getting hot here, so there's no other story. You know, we took with those degrees? The heat? Of course not. Your maqam, your status. That is what he's writing. Talking about that, I have said the same. Ah, excuse me. What are we talking, my dear brothers and sisters? Ya Allah. Forgiveness. If you want forgiveness, look what Abu Kahil says. The Prophet sallallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu says, Oh, Abu Kahil. Whoever sends blessings on me three times every day and three times every night out of love for me and longing for me, it is his right or her right on Allah that Allah forgive him his sins for that day and that night. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Ya Allah. You want to be prosperous in this world? In the world, dear friends? Look, look what Ubay bin Ka'ad says. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I send many blessings on you. What proportion of my prayer should I devote to you? The Prophet says to Islam, as much as you like. I said, says, when I say I said, I mean Ubay, Radiallahu Anhu. He said, a quarter? The Prophet says, Alayhi Islam, as much as you like. And if you increase it, it would only be better for you. The Sahabi says, a half? As much as you like, responds the Prophet. As much as you like, and if you increase it, it will be better for you. And he goes on by saying two thirds. Here's the same response. He brings here. Ubayn says, radiallahu anhu, I will devote all my prayers to sending blessings on you. And the Prophet says, in that case, it will suffice you from worries, and your sins will be forgiven. Ya subhanallah, ya subhanallah. Now my dear brothers and sisters, I need to clarify certain things. Just by reciting the salawat on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because the hadith says so, now we sit, mashallah, we don't go to work. Me, astaghfirullah. That is not what, what Allah is, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying. No, my dear brothers, ya Allah. Look at, look, how merciful our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. Sayyidatina Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, once when I saw the Prophet in a jovial mood, I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make a dua to Allah for me. Look at that. So the Prophet alayhi wa sallam says, Ya Allah, forgive Aisha her past and future sins, what she has hidden as well as what she has made apparent. So I said, Aisha says, I, I started, began to, as, I began smiling to such a point that, that my head fell on the lap of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah. I take that as a very Kodak moment. Can you imagine that moment, the lap of Sayyidatina Aisha on her husband's lap? 
Muduni Park, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, what a romantic moment. What do we find on our left nowadays, my dear brothers and sisters? I think only a dish cloth to wash the plates or something like that. Ya Allah, our, we are being told by Sayyidatina Aisha and our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the closeness and the intimacy of a husband and wife, ya subhanallah. So Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, she answers, I mean he answers, does my dua make you very happy? So Sayyidatina Aisha answers, how can your dua not make me happy? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answers, he says, Wallahi, it is the dua that I make for my ummah in every salah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. This is my loving Nabi between you and me. Ya Allah. Every salah our Prophet has been making dua. And he's still making dua in his grave because he's hayat to the Nabi. Ya Allah. The respect and we can carry on. There's so much to talk, my dear brothers. The respect that the subsequent generations have shown, we can see, I can tell you so many, is coming to mind. There's the Sultan of Ghazna, his name was Mahmoud. He one day addressed his servant whom he loved very much. His name was Muhammad. And one day he called him on his father's name. You know? Ya Abu Dawood. Say for example, his name, his father's name was Dawood. He said, oh son of Dawood. And Muhammad felt very, very hurt and sad because they have a close relationship. Why is he doing that? And he goes up to the king and asks, oh my king, why did you do something which I have not heard you do? And the Sultan says, I am always in a state of wudu. And to call out that lofty name, Muhammad, that lofty name, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which has been given to you without wudu, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I look at the piety of that man. In a state of wudu, my dear brothers, look at Imam Malik, rahimallah, one of the great giants of our school of thought. He said, whenever I wanted to go to the toilet, relieve myself in Medina, I go to the outskirts of Medina to relieve myself out of respect of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is buried there. This was the Adam, and we can talk about the Adam of it all the time. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. It has been again narrated by Abdul Rahman bin Abi Layla by Ka'ab bin Urjra met me and said, shall I not give you a present? Ala uhdiya laka hadiyyatan. Shall I give you a present from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And Abdul Rahman says, yes, radiallahu anhu. And he says, we asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, how should we, or how should one ask Allah to send blessings on you? The members of the family, and for Allah has taught you how to salute you in prayer. Ya Subhanallah. And the Nabi alayhi salam says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. We all know this. Wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim. Wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. Wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim. Wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. This is in our salah, my dear brothers. To such a degree, our salah will not even be accepted if we leave out the salawat on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the, the loftiness. We don't have to make high the name of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa rafa'na laka in Allah in the Quran. We have raised your remembrance. So if Allah has raised his remembrance, subhanallah, who are you? We can just try and imitate by reciting and respecting. And the greatest respect you can give to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is follow in his footsteps in every lifestyle that you have. That is the true salawat. Besides the salawat, ya Allah.
You know, those who know Dalai al Khairat, wa shawalik al Anwar fi dhikri salat al Nabi al Muhtar, it means meaning, it means the way marks of benefits and the brilliant burst of sunshine in the remembrance of blessings on the chosen Prophet. Imam Jazuri wrote this, Rahimallah, great personality, Ya Rasulullah. Imam Jazuri, Rahimallah, one day went to a well and he wanted to make wudu, but he could not get to the water. He could not get to the water. Never mind what he tried, he never had anything. Tried to look for a bucket, this, that, look for a rope, and so forth. So a girl, young girl, watches him and says, you are the one people pray so much and you can't even figure out how to get water out of a hole, says the girl. So she comes down, <coughs> she comes down and with the barakah and the miracle which Allah gave her, the water starts coming up, welling up right to the top and he performs his wudu and turns to her and says, how did you do that? How did you manage to do that? And she said, by reciting the salawat on him. By reciting the salawat on him, whom beasts lovingly follow as he walks through the wilds. So he wanted to know which salawat. She did not tell him. It was for him, like, like we will say, it's for me to know and you to find out. So Imam Jazuni Rahimallah wrote this beautiful book of Dalai al Khairat. It's quite a thick book. Those who have read it, mashallah, we have read it. It's part of our, our work that we try to do and upkeep. Very thick book of the different combinations of Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, ala Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, salatan tunjina, and so forth and so forth. Different types, quite a thick book. And you read it every day starting after Maghrib on a Sunday and ending. It's, it's, it's like, like you read the Jews of the Qur'an, that's how you read. Those that follow the Tariqat al for example, those who are in the Sufi orders, know what I'm talking about, how you've got to spread reciting salawat on the Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. Like Monday, Thursday, and Friday, you have to recite 2,000 salawats on the Nabi. Every other day is 1,000. And, and that's how one builds up one's spirituality, my dear brothers and sisters, subhanAllah. When Imam Jazuni, Rahimallah, was transported back to Marrakesh after 77 years, and this is documented, well documented, they had, they, they dug up his body and they saw him fresh as ever the day they put him down. It was even said in the riwayat, a person took the finger and pressed his cheek. Normally you have a bit of blood or whatever coming. He said even that was as if it was just the person only died today. This is the maqam and daraja that Waliullah have, my dear brothers and subhanAllah. We know the beauty of Imam Busayri. He was, he was paralyzed. And in that paralysis, he comes to the cover of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's asking Allah to cure him and the Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to intercede. And he writes this, Qasidatul Burda who we all know, has been recited for centuries and centuries, like in the, the, the Lai Al-Khairat. And he falls asleep. And in his sleep, the Prophet ﷺ pushes or strokes his face and over his whole body, his hand, and covers him with a shawl. And when he wakes up, his paralysis was completely gone. Shawl! Barakat Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah! So he goes to the bazaar and he meets a pious dervish and he says, recite for me that poetry which you recited in front of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Husayni is stunned because he hasn't told, informed anybody about it. And he says, I have written many poetry poems. Which one are you talking about? He says, the one, Amin Tadakuri, it starts, Qasida uh, Burta starts with that. You know, is it because of your remembrance? I mean, that's So, Imam Jazuli, 
I mean, Imam Busseini was quite shocked. So what, he said, how did you know? He says, because Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in my dream and I saw you reciting it in front of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Since that time, my dear brothers, I remember the time to speak about the beauty and the spiritual healing that Qasida Burda does, my dear brothers. Ya subhanallah. And even the, the viceroy of the time, Sa'id Ibn Farooqi, his, his viceroy was, was uh, Bahauddin. He was blind. And by reciting Qasida Burda, he became cured because of the barakah of Qasida Burda, Ya subhanallah. Ya Allah. I will give you one or two lines. Time is up. Look, the, this Qasida uh, Burda is in 10 parts. <coughs> Excuse me. And it, it has 165 verses. But the characteristic of it is it ends in meme. It's all that's why it's called the Mimiya. Meme for Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Da'a ila Allahi falmustamsikuna bihi. Da'a ila Allahi falmustamsikuna bihi. Mustamsikuna bi habalin ghayri mumu fasiyami. See the meme? It says, he called people towards Allah. So those who cling to him, cling to a rope which will never snap. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And then you all recite, Mawla ya salli wa sallim da'iman abadan ala habibika khayril khalqi kullihimi. Says Allah, Send peace and blessings for always, daim and abada, always and always, and ever upon your beloved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the best of all creation. And there are so many verses. I just chose one at random. Ya Rabbi bil Mustafa balig maqasidan qasiduna wa filna ma madaya wa sial. Mawla ya salli wa sallim da'iman abadan ala habibika khayril khalqi kullihimi May Allah fill our hearts with love of his beloved Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May he inspire our tongues to send many blessings on him, alayhi salatu wa salam, and guide us to lead our lives in accordance to his exalted and noble sunnah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. I take this opportunity again of thanking Dean TV for being here, which is, I believe, being broadcasted throughout Africa, inshallah. Having said that, uh, immediately after the salah, if he's here, uh, Gogan Chen, he's from China, he's a Buddhist, he will accept Islam, inshallah. As well as, um, um, I forgot her name again, Pamela. Pamela from Fishuk, she's also going to accept Islam, inshallah. Walhamdulillah.